she didn't even want to be a pop star. It was just like what was presented to her. Like she wasn't very compelling. And she kind of just let her feelings for men kind of center everything that she did, which I didn't love. I don't know. I just think the premise was really, really promising and the writing was good. It was like poignant. It was to the point. And the book was pretty fast paced. Like I was definitely engaged and intrigued throughout the entire book. But I just think the characters weren't as compelling as they could have been for a pop star story. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. Anyway, I did enjoy it though. I liked the writing so much. I did tap a few lines, tap a few lines. I just liked discussions on women in media and your body and sort of the stuff you give up when you become famous. And yeah, I would definitely read more from this author, but it wasn't like a groundbreaking read. So three and a half stars. Then I read a novel, a love story.
industry, how you're viewed as you get older, and I think that's the part that a lot of people, like, just conveniently wanted to ignore. I don't know. I think everyone's focusing on the age gap romance and the taboo of that, which is definitely addressed. And I will say, this is not a romance book. It, is, it does not have an AGA, so <laughs> don't go in. It is definitely just a women's fiction, but I just thought it was, like, a very unique blend. But if it sounds interesting to you and you're not put off by a 20 year age gap, by like a 20, 21 year old guy sleeping with a 40 year old, if you're not put off by that, then I would recommend it if, if you're interested. But I just feel like a lot of people go in knowing that there's this age gap and they just immediately like kind of write everything else off. But I really do think that there are some interesting bits of dialogue and discussion in this that I liked didn't love the movie, didn't like swoon over the romance. I was more just like invested in Solan as a character. She's like an art collector. She's going through a divorce and you even get to see like her ex-husband move on with a younger woman and like no one cares. And it's just interesting. I just, I thought this was interesting. And then I also watched a really good video essay about it. I'll link it in the description box. That kind of helped me even like appreciate it more. So I did give it, I think, like a three and a half or three stars. Again, like, not groundbreaking, but it's toward the top of the books this month. And I think I went into it with such low expectations. I thought it was just going to be, like, weird and super, like, cringy and smutty and, like, it definitely has spice and there's definitely some cringy bits, but I think for the most part, it's a genuine story. And it was entertaining. Next book is a new release. And I got this pretty special edition in my probably smut book subscription this month. So I was very excited to pick it up. It is five brothers. and she's been hooking up with 
she actually chose the right brother at the end, which was which was nice. She ends up with only one. It's not like a why choose romance. I only ended up giving this a two stars, even though I was like heavily invested throughout. I was entertained. I wanted to know what was gonna happen. But the whole book just kind of gave me a weird vibe because Christian is 18, like freshly 18. And these men are like in their late 20s, early 30s. And I just, I feel like I'm okay with an age gap if the youngest person is like at least like 23, like mid 20s, you know? I feel like the book and the story could have functioned exactly the same if Christian was like 23. And like the second she like got with the brother, they're talking about babies and they're talking about, and I'm just like, oh my God, she's literally 18. Like let teenagers be teenagers. I don't know. Penelope Douglas lately, I feel like a lot of their books have centered around like 18, 19 year old girls with like 30 year old men. And I just, it's not my vibe. It's not my vibe. I didn't like it. I got weird vibes. I got weird vibes. And all of the brothers talk about Christian. Like she's an object. Like they literally are like, when's my turn? When's my turn with her? Oh, it's your turn. Like, you can have her. There's a plot twist in this book that was kind of wild that I didn't expect. And I think it did add a little bit of, like, angst and tension to the story. But it was just kind of weird. I didn't love it. So I gave it two stars. I just, like, can we go back to, like, Punk 57? Where they were, like, both 18, 19, and, like, then it's fine. Then I'm vibing. I don't know. I just don't get why she had to be an 18 year old but somehow act like a grown woman like babying these grown men and take she also has her own younger siblings that she has to take care of and I was like damn I don't know Christian just felt like a victim she felt like a victim the entire book and I felt kind of bad for her so two stars not very romantic for a romance book in my opinion now the next book I am kind of sad I'm disappointed this is Beautiful Villain by Rebecca Kenny. I, I was so excited for this that I even picked up this gorgeous special edition. It literally matches my outfit, <laughs> like, perfectly. But this is a dark romantic retelling of The Great Gatsby. And it just came out, like, a few weeks ago. And I was so excited to pick it up. If you know me, if you've seen my, like, 10 favorite books video from a few years ago, I love The Great Gatsby. It's always been one of my favorite books. And so anything, like, Gatsby adjacent, oh, sign me up. So I went in thinking that this was going to be, like, a dark fantasy fae Great Gatsby thing. It's actually vampires. It's actually vampires. Great Gatsby. It's like Twilight and Great Gatsby had a baby, but make it really, really cringy in the writing. Like the writing was just infantile. Like this is supposed to be a spicy new adult, like adult, you know, romantic And the writing was so immature and it just felt like the, the author was writing like we were stupid. Like, the first half of the book, our main character, Daisy, obviously, trying to figure out what's different about Jay. Like, now that Gatsby's back in her life, she's like, what's going on with him? Like, something's off. And it's like, the whole time, you're like, oh my god, it's so obvious that he's a vampire, you fucking idiot. But, like, honestly, like, the author writes as if you're stupid and you don't know. And that Daisy's stupid and we're all just idiots. And then, once she finds out Jay's a vampire or whatever, and they get, they fall for each other, the smut, it was just like such intense smut and spice. And that's weird. I don't like it. I don't like the dichotomy of really infantile YA style writing, and then like loads of heavy explicit smut. It just feels like weird. And also, the final, like, nail in the coffin, really, this did not do any justice <laughs> to, like, the original Gatsby. 
is like a tutor. He's kind of, she just got out of a long-term relationship. Her name's Allie, and she wants to write a book, but she feels like she hasn't lived enough experiences to like be able to write enough like unique characters and stuff. And Henry, he is neurodivergent and he's kind of struggling because he's on the hockey team. He's the captain this year. And his like coach is being really hard on him because he's kind of struggling in this class, this writing class. And so they meet one night through a mutual friend and she loves the class that he is struggling in. So she agrees to help tutor him and then he's gonna like take her on some dates and give her some like fun experiences. So they kind of help each other out. 